Hello, in today's video we'll be replacing the vapor canister purge valve on this 2005 Honda Civic. The purge valve can be the cause of many evap codes because there's also a few ways that this valve can fail. In my previous video, I showed ways to test this valve and how it failed. But for now let's get started with the video. And to get started, I begin by loosening the clamp under the air intake box which attaches it to the throttle body. And for this I'll be using a 516 socket with a 3 inch extension or you can also use an 8mm socket, it'll work just the same. Now we just loosen the clamp counterclockwise a few turns, just enough to loosen the clamp and be able to move it around. Now that we got the clamp loose, let's disconnect the intake air temperature sensor by pressing down on the tab of the connector. We'll now want to loosen these bolts holding the lid onto the intake box. These bolts do remain attached to the lid, so you'll just want to loosen them to their free front of threads. After all the bolts are loose, we can remove the air filter cover and the air filter, which did remain attached to the cover in this case. And as you can see the filter is filthy and it should be replaced while we're at it. To remove the lower box assembly, we'll need a 10mm socket and I use an extension as well. For this step there should be three bolts, but one is missing on this car, so let's go ahead and remove the two. For this first one, you'll want to be careful when you remove the bolt not to let the rubber grommet fall. And this right here is a piece I'm referring to. And now to remove the second bolt. And this is where the third bolt should be, but it's not. Now we'll want to press this clamp together and slide it back. Now we should be able to remove the lower intake box, sliding it up and off the throttle body first, making sure that the hole slides off the valve cover as well. And with that the lower intake box is off, and if the rubber seal stays on the throttle body, just remove it and reinstall it on the intake box. And this is the purge valve we're going to be removing, which is held on by two screws. Here's one, and here's the other. We can now disconnect the connector by pressing down on the tab and sliding it back and off. And these screws can sometimes be hard to loosen, so what I do is put a screwdriver bit on a socket so I can use a ratchet to loosen them. And if you've seen my previous videos, you may recognize that this is a piece off of my impact driver kit. And now with the ratchet attached, I go ahead and loosen both screws, making sure to push in as I do so it doesn't slip off. Once they're loose, I can just use my hand to loosen them, but you'll want to be careful not to drop these screws or you may not be able to find them. And here's one, now for the other. Once you get both screws off, all that's left is the two hoses attached to it. Now to remove these, just squeeze the clamp ends together, then wiggle and rotate the hose off. Now do the same on this other hose. And out comes the purge valve. And the reason I'm replacing this purge valve here is because it's leaking basically stuck open, causing a vacuum leak in turn causing the car to run rough, but luckily the valve isn't leaking as bad as it could. If it were it could make the car hard to start, cause misfires and so much more. Then we also got that P0497 code which indicates a low purge flow, and since the system isn't able to build up the proper pressure, the computer will detect it as a low purge flow, hence being our reason for the code as well. And here's the replacement valve I'll be using. I would have preferred a Denso, but they didn't have it in stock locally and I didn't have time to wait for it but this one should work fine as well. Well let's go ahead and install this valve. 
First, the two hoses, making sure that you install it the same direction as the one you removed. Squeezing the clamp as you slide in the hose. And now for the other. And now for the hard part, installing these screws without dropping them. I kind of pull back on the purge valve so it can kind of hold the screw in the middle. Then I rotate the screw to grab a thread, all while using my other finger to hold the screw in case the bit slides off. Now once I'm sure I got a few threads, I can install the other screw before tightening it fully. I want to have enough slack on the purge valve to do the same and be able to move it around and adjust the purge valve to align the screw. Now we can go ahead and tighten the screws all the way. And if you use a ratchet, you just want to snug it up a little bit more. And with that done, let's reconnect the connector to the purge valve. And if your rubber seal moved out of place like this one, you'll want to reposition it back into the lower air box like so. Let's install the lower air box back in place, just following the reverse steps of the removal. Guiding the hose onto the valve cover, the intake hose back into the air box, and then finally slide down the air box onto the throttle body. And if you have to, you can loosen the clamp a little more to make it easier to push down. Now slide the hose clamp over. With everything in position, let's tighten the clamp. Now for the two outer bolts that hold down the air box, starting with positioning the bushing, then threading in the bolt. And now for the other. Followed by tightening the bolts. Reconnect the intake temperature sensor. Position the new air filter and place this middle seal in the groove. Followed by the air lid. Now we'll want to tighten the bolts starting from the middle out in a crisscross pattern. With all those bolts tight, all that's left is starting the car, driving it around, and see if we fix the problem. Which in this case we did, and as of today it's been over a week, and the check engine light's been off, and running even better than before. Well that just about does it for this video, I hope you found it helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel, and please subscribe if you haven't done so.